Hello again. Welcome back to the clouds. I'm really sorry to say, but we've been invaded. And they're eating our trees. We were walking in our field the other day and we saw the badgers have done this. And this. And this. We have holes like this all along our deer fence. They're made by badgers. They go underneath the deer fence and lift up this rabbit netting that's there. The rabbit netting is there to stop hares getting in. Now, badgers aren't a problem, but once this hole is here, the hares can get in. They'll come along and nip the tops of our trees, which we don't want. We're gonna have to fix this. Now this is what we're trying to prevent. This tree has been bitten by a hare. They'll go up on their hind legs and nip the top of it. Now this volgard here is no help at all against hare. It is 60 centimeters tall or two feet tall. And while it helps against voles, it's no good here. Now you can tell it's a hare nip because it's at this sharp angle. And oftentimes they'll bite the top of it off and just let it land on the ground below. They don't eat it, they just do it for fun. And they'll go along from tree to tree to tree and systematically take the tops off of all the trees. This happened to our hazels a couple of years ago. So we need to get our deer fence and the rabbit netting at the bottom sorted to protect our little trees. Now badgers are omnivores. They get 80% of their food by stalking through our fields in the dead of night in search of their prey, earthworms. They get to them by digging up the grass like this and creating these holes. They root around in the soil and eat earthworms. Apparently they can get through hundreds in a single night. Now for us, it means that these bare patches are prime habitat for seeds to land on, for new trees to germinate and grow and increase the size of our woodland. So badgers really are our friends. And we knew we had badgers when we bought this place. Our land is crisscrossed with these badger motorways, we call them, or badger highways if you're American. And they're quite helpful because they led to where they crossed our boundary and that's where we then put our badger gates, which they're now going to use, of course. Now badgers are roughly as long as hazel, about three feet or 90 centimeters long, and we about a third as much, 10 to 12 kilos, but they're really short and low to the ground. So when they want to push through something, they really can put a lot of power behind their snouts. So the badgers have made this hole under our deer fence, not three meters away from a perfectly serviceable badger gate. Now we thought we'd trained them, In fact, I think our very first video ever was on how to train your badger, but clearly they've forgotten. So I think we've got to crack out the peanut butter and have another go. Uh, my wife did suggest that we perhaps make a sign to say to the badgers, please use badger gate, but I don't think they speak very good English, so it's not going to work. So we're going to use peanut butter instead. Do you like it? If you smear the peanut butter on the bottom of the gate, this horizontal bit here, then the badgers should eat it and inadvertently find themselves on the other side and think, oh look, this is how you get through. I don't have to burrow underneath more peanut butter. So this is our hazel coppice. We planted these about four years ago and we're gonna be using them for hazel hurdles and bean poles, hopefully this summer. Some of them are tall enough over there, but the rest of them, like this one, I think need a little more time to grow. So I'm gonna cut this branch. I think I can get four pegs out of it. And I'll show you how that works. I wasn't able to get as close in as I wanted with the loppers. These other branches were in the way and I don't want to leave it like this. So I'm gonna get the bow saw here and cut the branch there as flush to the soil as I can. The goal behind that is you want the new shoots to come out from the roots. This helps create a nice fat stool where the branches then come from the roots. There we go, that's looking pretty good. That should work beautifully. So what I'm gonna do is cut this stick here, there, and there at an angle. This will create basically a tent peg, which I can then drive through the rabbit netting and hopefully peg it down securely enough that the badgers can't push it back up. All right, there we go. Four pegs, should do the trick. So you can see how this rabbit netting is laid against the ground. The idea being if a hare or a rabbit comes towards our land, they'll bump into this, they can't get through. And if they try to dig down, this rabbit netting is in the way. But of course, being lifted up like this, they can just go under. I did try to weigh this down one point with this rock, but it clearly wasn't enough. So we shall peg it in place with these and see if this is a successful tactic.
and a rock. That's pretty secure, I think. Right, so we've got that hole all secured. I hope it'll work better this time. And peanut butter on the badger gate for training purposes. So fingers crossed it'll work beautifully. But we're going to put the trail cam out tonight just to make sure they are indeed using it. Might get some good footage. The peanut butter should be sufficient to get the badgers to come through and use the badger gate. But just in case, we're going to add some more tempting snacks here on the ground as well. Now badgers are supposed to eat apples. We've not actually seen them do it on our trail cam yet. We put some apples in some different locations around the field and left the trail cam out to see who would eat them. We saw foxes eating the apples and some little blackbirds and then a buzzard coming down and trying to eat the blackbirds, which wasn't very good. Um, but these apples, you might recall from a previous video, we had loads of apples from our orchard and made apple wine and apple cider, and these are left over from that. They've actually fared fairly well being left outside. Anyway, we're going to put these here on the ground and see who comes along tonight to munch on them. It should be good. When we were having our deer fence put in, we walked the perimeter many times to see where the badgers were coming and going because we didn't want this to happen. There's a badger gate right there, so we need to put some more peanut butter on it to entice them to use it. It really smells heavily of badgers here. They're like little mini bulldozers. They just push through wherever they want to go. So hopefully these little sticks will do the job. But we're going to put some peanut butter on that badger gate as well, and hopefully that will retrain them. Maybe it'll stick this time. <laughs> There we go. A bit more. Right. Looks pretty secure to me. So that's the badger hole we just blocked a moment ago. This is the badger gate they should be using. So we make sure it is swinging smoothly and then smear some peanut butter on it. And some for hazel. Come on, pup. Hazel! No! This way. We're going now. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to leave you with some footage that we're going to film tonight. Hope you enjoy.